We're into chapter six now, and uh, we've pretty much finished everything I was going to show you with the DMX blueprints, but there's something else that I promised right at the start that we would have a look at, and that is how to make a UI look nice. And to do that, I'm going to raid something from the Epic Marketplace. Uh, now, I've bought something already that cost me money. I don't want to presume that you're going to spend money, so you could try searching for your own assets. There's some free assets already on the Marketplace. Uh, just a simple Google will show you uh, a whole bunch of free UI assets. Or you could try making your own in Paint or Photoshop. But just to make my life easier, I'm going to show you based on a, a pack that I bought. Um, and the reason I'd like to show you that is because this is my workflow. I laughed at a little bit more one of my colleagues in particular who thinks I buy too many things on the marketplace, but I do find it really useful to just get things that help me in my workflow to get there quicker. So we can jump back to my screen and I'm just going to drag over the Epic Games Launcher, uh, which I've shown before with my enormous collection of assets, um, which I must stress a lot of them are free and some of them I've got in deals. Uh, I don't buy all of them out front, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for user interface. So I'm going to just put in UI, see what comes up. In fact, I can also filter this by, I'm just going to unclick all and choose 2D assets. And this is what I want here, the modern RPG pack. Oh, there's an update available, that's really cool, but I'm not going to update it. I'm just going to stick it straight in my project because I would like to just get on with it, to be honest. Um, so I'm going to add to projects and I've got to choose the project and the project I'm using is the one we created, DMX console. Add to project, and it will just. Uh, if you haven't downloaded it, it will download it the first time. So it's downloading it now. Um, and what I'm going to do is, while it's downloading, I'm going to pause and come back when it's added it into my Epic project. And we are back, and I've got my um, modern RPG GUI pack uploaded now. Um, it took a couple of minutes. So when you import anything from the store, it just dumps it into your content folder here. Um, it is possible to move everything and get it all organized. You could just have a, a folder called uh, plugins or, or no, you're not plugins, actually a bad choice, but you know, uh, content uh, downloader or something or epic content, whatever you want to call it, but stick it all in there and makes it a bit neater. Um, I like to leave it all on the content folder if I'm just doing just a few things like this because this is fairly neat still. It's when you get a big project, it starts to get a bit messy. Um, and it's come as a pre-built project by someone else. So in here, they've got their folder structure uh, in widgets. We've got a load of widgets like the one we've built, but this is their versions. We could have started with this. Like if we double click on settings, it will load up. Uh, I stuck it over here, hang on. It's created a, a very simple looking UI with these really nice buttons. Um, and we could have actually started with this and built out of it. We could have just connected up this widget to our blueprint. We could have built it on here. Uh, but there's a lot of other stuff in there you don't need, so it's nice to start from scratch and not have all the mess. If we go back, we've got textures. They've got textures for each of those things, so we were just in the settings uh, widget, so they've laid out quite nicely, so everything that's in that widget is here as a texture. This is actually what we want for this project at the moment. We'll come back to this. And source files. This is... Uh, uh, not relevant at all to us, but you can see what they're intending. So if we go back to the settings, you can see this is the picture of what they think it should look like. And some of this content actually is, is used in the widget. So like the backgrounds and things you'll find in there too. And the level blueprints. Now we have saved our map as DMX console somewhere else. So we're going to load up their blueprint and have a look at how it runs. It's quite useful to see what they imagined it being used for. So you see it's imported the whole scene. There's nothing in it at all. It's completely blank. Nothing here. You know, we did the same thing, but we just got rid of all the sky spheres and everything. If we go into the level blueprint, I reckon we'll find the same thing that we built. Here we go. Uh, event begin play. And see, get to play a controller. There's quite a lot more stuff in there about building the the size of the menu. It's gone a bit more detailed than that. So it's why sometimes it's useful to work with someone else's. They've done quite a lot of work building all these different scenes as buttons. And then it creates the user widget and adds it to the viewport. So this is a bit we did. We didn't do all the rest of the stuff. So let's hit play and see what, what we got. So here we go, this is quite neat. Now, you, if you've seen any of my work before, you'll recognize this. We use this for our Hello World project. So we can type in a, a name, let's type in Password is our password. Remember, remember me. Yeah. Okay. And sign in. 
and it is not going to be able to sign me up because of course it doesn't know who we are <laughs> it's not connected to any sort of account system um so how do we move forwards with this let's just try no won't let me so what we could try doing is just loading a different widget up so we go into the blueprint level blueprint let's change this to counter integer where does that come from let's change this to one so now that is going to now choose option one instead of option zero which was signed in it's now going to go straight to this we could have just changed that to a different widget but um it's easy to go backwards from here without messing it all up let's hit play so now it's loads up a different window there we go and it is not stretching very nicely it's all hidden down here so that's probably because of the way i've built my my screen is very large um but i've made it smaller so i can capture it on obs and uh, it thinks it's much bigger than it is, so it's tried pulling it out. If I try moving it, you'll see that the objects are moving. But I don't want to change the size of my window because otherwise I've ruined this for you to be able to see what I'm doing. Uh, I made it a viewport tab. If I drag it out, what happens? Let's try drag it right out. You can sort of see what's going on there. <laughs> you can actually see the clouds behind because it's um, it's playing it in the in the camera. So you see, it's got some some buttons. If I click on the buttons, it loads off other widgets, or maybe not. Well, anyway, we're not using this bit, but you can see what what you've got to play with if you wanted to come in and have a look. Let's go back to our DMX console. We're going to go back to open level, and it's right there in the root because we saved it in the maps folder. I made our outline a really big. Why do we do that? Stick it back over here. Ooh. Docking my panels all over the place. Right, when you all get messed up like this, you can rebuild your view. I can move away a window. Load layout. Default editor layout. It's probably going to change the size of my screen again, though. There we go. Back to normal. So let's fix that. Right, so we're back into our DMX console, um, but we're not actually working in the map. We're working in our system here. What we want to do is just make this look a bit neater. Now we've got a couple of things here we don't really need. Like this is a debug controller for changing our fixtures, um, uh, the, the original number of our fixture, which uh, we don't need anymore because we built a new one over here. So let's just delete that because it's not connected to anything anymore. Likewise, we don't need this test button. Let's get rid of that. We could do a bit of labeling, um, but we'll do that as part of the UI development. So we've got our set game slot, our set username. We'll try to make those look neater when we put in some, some nice elements to it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at these buttons and see what we could change here. Now the uh, the kits that we bought came with um, some widgets that came with existing textures and things. What's inside the widget is still these buttons. It's just changed all these settings here. So all we need to do is, is update some of the uh, the texture details. Now I'm going to open up a widget just so I've got as a reference. It's kind of useful to look at what they've done. Um, so I can see there on the pause button they've got they've got some uh, nice buttons. So I'm going to drag that up here and have to hold it. So let's just have a look at their widget and how they've done it. So they've got all this laid out. They've added in the image. They've created that's the image size. Now I could just copy and paste all of this. So I can just do a copy. On the appearance or the style. And if I go back to my console UI, if I do a paste, it's now applied those same settings. So it's put the same image in, it's updated all the hovered everything. And that looks quite nice, doesn't it? Now I could change the text as well. They've done text using the Roboto font. Um, it's not that exciting, but we haven't loaded any other fonts in. We've only got those, those three, so we might as well just leave it because that's what we're using. We're using Roboto, but we've got it in bold, so we can leave that. So while I've got my clipboard saved with all that information, let's just go around and copy and paste that into all the buttons. Can I add it to here as well, do you think? Is that going to work? Add it to my spin box? No. It's fine. We'll come back to that. Uh, we've got our macro buttons as well. And paste that there. Okay. Uh, now I need to find something with a spin box. So let's let's close that. We don't need that one now. 
let's go to that settings page because that one has some things in it in there. Does that have a spin box? Is that a spin box? No. Got lots of text here. Let's try searching for spin box. No. So they haven't used any spin boxes in this one. Let's keep looking. Content browser. If they haven't used any, it's fine. We'll just build one from scratch. It'll be a good exercise to do anyway. So I reckon ranking, if it's not in here, got scroll box, but not a spin box. That's okay. We're going to build our own. So let's just close these down. Let's go back to a console UI. So what is significant about what they've made is the, the colors of the background. They just loaded that image in. So the image we want is here. Now if we click on this little button, browse to, it will take us to the actual asset, which is there. So now we've got that folder open. Now what I tend to do is actually have um, a couple of these. You can, you can dock this so it will stay. So I've now got that as a, as a floating window so I don't lose it. Um, and I could then have my content browser still as well. Uh, I actually have two or three content browsers open at once because it's quite useful to be able to drag things between different content browsers or be able to access two, thing, two things at once. You might be dragging something into your scene and then applying a, an image to it. So I'll select my spin box. We're going to go to the background image. And which one was it? See, I've lost it again already. Let's click on this. Browse to asset. It is this one. Resume. We could use any of these. But let's just add resume. There we go. I see it's very different in size, but we'll have a look at that in a sec. Now, the other thing that's interesting, of course, is that we've got the active background and the hovered background. Th these will change when we drag our slider over it. So we do need to apply an image to these. Now, we could have the same color or different color. If it's a different color, it would, it would react when you dragged your um, mouse over it, which is kind of useful because it then tells you that you're in the right place where your mouse is. So you can see these are all different colors very slightly. So let's go with um, let's go with the darker one for when we're hovered, and we'll go with the lighter one for when it's active. There we go. I'm not too sure what's going to do actually, but we're going to check in a minute. Background. Oh no, sorry. Uh, what's that? Hovered goes dark, and clicked goes. Oh, how much one I use now? They look the same. That one. And let's make that a little bit bigger, so that it fills it up. And we're going to have to move the text as well. I really what I should do is just copy the copy the size so that is which one was I was moving. I was moving the scale so it's 543 by 543 alignment. Let's just copy the size. Let's make that 110 by 60, and I'll do the same for this one. And now we're going to get the font over now. So let's go and have a look at the font. Font. Let's just center justify it. Didn't move. Why didn't it move? It was so bold. Italics. Bold. It's not moving. It's interesting. Uh, let's do it again for this one. Font move. And I have no idea why it's not moving, but what we'll do is we'll we'll play it and see if it will jump itself over if it just needs to go into play mode. Could try to do some padding which will move it. Uh, let's try typing in two. No, nope. that's not working either. Okay, well we'll have a look at it and let's see what happens. So let's go back into what well, compile and save first. Oh we've got an error message. What is that error message for? On click button test does not have a matching component because we deleted the test button, but it was doing something. It was doing absolutely nothing. It's not connected to anything, but it's still in the scene, so it's giving us a warning saying you've got a button, it's sending an execute pin. But you don't actually need it, so we're going rid of it. There we go. Nice and neat. Hit play, and there we go. Look, we've got our nice looking thing. So it has moved it to the middle. How strange. And that's interesting, isn't it? When we click on it, it is changing the slider to a completely different image. Uh, these look nice. They kind of work. They look good when you when you click on them. When you hover. But the on clicked is very different. So we need to find a different image for the on clicked. So let's go back to 
our designer. Let's see what we missed. Got the arrows image. And we've got the oh, active fill brush. It could be this. So what we should probably do is choose another image. I deleted the, uh, the content browser now. So let's browse to the image. I'm going to dock it in layout. And let's try... Let's just try something. All right, let's try one of these cool little arrows because that might just drag across then. What I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to add it into all of these. I have no idea what's going to happen. We're going to try it out. Compile, save. Let's go and have a look. Play. And if I come over here, oh, look. <laughs> So I was almost there, look, as we drag it, it's creating this nice little moving arrow thing, but we've got it over here as well, which is no good. And it, it thinks it's part of the controller. So we need to change that. Um, we've also lost our number. So we need to figure out why that's happened as well. But that's quite neat though, I like that. So oh, it actually shows us what it's gonna look like there. So we don't want one of those. So which one's that do you think? That is probably, the inactive field brush, let's try putting that back to clear to get rid of it. Compile. No. Uh, arrows image, let's try changing that. Clear. Aha. What's it done there? It's made something else instead. Well, what I'm actually going to do is just do a bit of undoing because I think that is, now we know what it is, we know what we need to do. There we go. So that's gone back now to a number so is the arrows image arrows image is trying to draw a number but everything else has this in it let's just add that back in so the hovered and inactive because we think it's the arrows image yeah there we go let's go back in and check that oh, it's freezing on me don't crash it's crashed right i'll pause while we start Okay, and we're back from the crash. Uh, if it crashes for you, you know, it happens, right? Um, is it play? Let's see what was actually meant to be happening. We were looking at this um, this new widget to slide across. Let's slide. Oh, look at that, it's lovely. It's a nice sort of arrow that grows there. You can see it's actually scaling it as it's going across. I really like that. If we let go, it's sort of, okay, it's getting in the way of the numbers. We can update that, we can change the numbers. So well, that's quite a quite a neat a neat idea, isn't it, to drag that across in there. So um, I'm not going to build the whole UI. I'm showing you how to do it yourself here. But let's let's just go back into that component. Uh, I've lost it because we all crashed. So let's go back into Blueprints Console UI. Okay, and now let's have a look at the slider. Now we're actually going to use a very similar set of tools for this. I mean, let's have a look at the widgets that they created in, in the pack. And we'll see, let's have a look at recharge. It's probably going to have something that's relevant, right? No, that's not at all right. Uh, we'll have a look at, we saw them in settings. Let's go back to settings. Right, here we go. So they've used this nice little arrow here. So they've used the image TBG slider in the, uh, where was that? So that was in style, in normal bar image. And the hover bar image, there's nothing there. And nothing on the disabled bar image. So it's just on that one. And they've got this nice, I can't, can't select it, but they've got a nice dot there. Oh, is that because it's in, oh, yeah, normal thumb image, it's there. So normal thumb image, they have got T button slider in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this over to the other side of my screen, which isn't very helpful for you because you can't see it, but that doesn't matter um, because all that matters is that you can see the content, which is here, TB big slider. Okay, so I'm going to select this intensity slider. I'm going to go to the normal bar image and I'm going to click and drag that in to here. Okay, now they've set theirs up uh, a little bit thicker than ours. Uh, they've got a size of 521, which no, so that's what we've got, uh, 521. The width of it is, is that the same or is it different? That is the same. 
image size is the same. So they've made theirs a little bit thicker. But I can't figure out where. Image size is the same. Is it in advanced? No. We'll drag it out. It's just changing the scale. Bar thickness, there we go, what's that? And there we go, bar thickness should be 21. That's nice, isn't it? Right, the intensity label doesn't need to be there now, it's in the way, so I'm going to move that out of the way. Let's go back to here, and we're going to change the normal thumb image to the image that they've provided, which is a nice little round button. I stress again that you know if you don't have any of these, that's fine. You, know, you can make your own, that'd be kind of cool, actually. Um, now the bar thickness is much bigger um, for the, the dot. The dot now looks a little bit out of proportion compared to theirs. Uh, so I might make the image size smaller. Let's try 72 by 72. That's a bit neater. And as for the text, they have used, let's, I'll drag this over so you can see it. Uh, for the music, they've got everything set to a bottom regular. Uh, and all they've done is they set a color for it. So I quite like their style, so we're just going to copy the colour and we're going to use that to set our colour of ours. There. Now the reason why I'm literally copying this straight over is because UIs are a skill. It is an art form. Right, to design a nice UI, I don't have that skill. You know, you can see when I was first setting this up, knowing how to lay things out making it make sense to a user is something that if you were doing this professionally, you'd go and employ a designer to do, someone that specializes in designing UIs for apps or for games or for websites. It is a, it's a specialist skill. Now the people that submit these game packs on the marketplace, I don't know if they're experts or not, but you can see that a lot more thoughts gone into it than I'm going to put in. So when they've created something really nice like this and they've chosen a color palette and they are uh, laying things out and with a certain proportion of space between all the different elements, it's advisable to take it because they might know more than you do. So I quite like using these packs because they give me the chance to um, to make something look more professional than I could do myself. Just wanted to say that. I'm going to copy this style again and I'm going to paste it into this slider now. Right, it has created for me the style of the bar. But it hasn't done. Oh, it has. There you go. And this was controlling. What did it control? It controls the shutter. So we're going to copy this text. Control C, Control V. Drag it down here, and I'm going to change that to shutter. And I'm going to put some more labels. Now I've got these. So I might as well just keep reusing because they look nice. This one was doing, is it Gobos? Yep, yeah, that one's a Gobo. Color. Yes, I know, with a U, we're British. Well, here we are anyway. Um, instead, I'd love to know whereabouts you are in the world if you're watching these, please leave it in the comments. Well, I'm going to take the settings for this uh, spin box and copy that across to the others as well. So I'm going to copy the style from here and I'm going to click on this one and paste it in. This is going to bring across, hopefully. And it didn't, didn't do it. Too much risk. Okay, we'll do it one at a time. Then we'll do the background, background brush. Try to send that three times fast. It has put it in. Hmm, how curious. Um, copy the active brush from here and paste that in. And we're going to copy the hover brush, paste that in. I'm going to compile it, see if that updates it. There we go. Didn't want to update it until it was compiled for some reason. So we're going to change the size of this again, like we did for the other. So we made that, what was it, 
110 by 60. And 110 and 60. And we're going to center justify. Oh, that looks very different. Oh, we haven't updated that one yet. Um, and we're going to center justify the text. And we'll do this one as well while we're at it. And now well, let's try pasting in these styles as well. There may be a better way of doing this, and I'd love to hear it. Logical thing is probably to build it all in the first place inside one of these widgets and just copying and pasting all the bits. Okay, so we know about saving that's loads, but let's just drag these over and let's name them what they are because I kept getting confused. So the top one was the save game slot. So we can call that preset because that's the the vernacular. Oh, that again, that's the vernacular for the um, for the lighting fixtures. So think of the user of this is actually going to be someone that understands lights or wants to understand lights or has some awareness of lights. Whereas when we've been building it, we've been using the name user index because that's what relates to the code. It's up to you which way you go. I'm, I'm just telling you how I do it. Fixture select. Okay, and that selects the fixture. So let's copy. No, I'll just move those over. There we go. Now, oh, we've still got a couple more to do. We've got to do these. So I'm going to copy and paste the styles from these sliders into these ones. Ooh, doesn't look too good. And this one, paste. Let's just compile that, see how it looks. Right, it has completely hidden the bar. That's very strange. Okay, let's make the image for this smaller. Let's do 26. I don't know why 26. I'll just pick that randomly. 26 and 26. Mm, maybe a little bit bigger. Let's go for 35. Doesn't look too bad. It looks a bit small as a as a line there, doesn't it? So maybe let's make it a bit bigger. Let's go for 140. 140 wide. There we go. Okay. Looking okay. I think are we overlapping a bit? Just a little bit. So I'm just going to drag this out. Move this up. The idea is it's meant to look like a trackpad, is the logic there. Um, I'll put pan at the, mm, yeah, put it at the end and tilt. I'll put it up here and I'll just go back into here to get that color. Copy and paste. Paste that there. Paste that there. There we go. Now, the final thing I'm going to do is just to start grouping this and make it look nice. I'm just going to do a compile and save so we don't lose anything. Um, now, if you select a group of objects like, like this, I'm going to select, shift select these. And then when you right click on it in the browser here, you get the option to wrap it with something. Now, I'm going to wrap it with a canvas panel. So I've got canvas panels inside canvas panels. Oh no, actually, I don't want to do that because it's <laughs> it just said the thing that makes it look really ugly um, because it's relative to the canvas panel. So what what we need to do is is to is to group this into a uh, another another user interface that so we can put something behind it so it looks kind of neat. So actually, I'm not going to use a, another canvas panel. I'm going to use a border. It might do the same thing, um, moving all around. Let's have a look. Ooh, that's not really what I wanted. It's applied it to the whole canvas panel. We needed that anyway, but it's not where I wanted it. So I'm going to leave that there for the sec. Uh, this border, we can now apply an image to it. And we've got loads of nice images on the um, in the widgets that the, they provided, which we are going to use to set the image on this one. Uh, behave advanced. Do you know what? I think I don't want a border either. The border's not really working for me, because I can't add an image to it. The border is something that goes around the outside. Let's try one more time. Okay, I'm just going to drag a an image down to here. There we go, and I'm going to make it 1920 by 1080 because that's how big 
our screen is. And I'm going to set it to zero, zero, zero because the anchor is in the corner. Now let me explain anchors. Anchor is this thing up here. Okay, If I move the anchor to the middle, it will now be anchored to the middle. So that means if anything changes, if the size of the screen changes, that will always stay in the middle of the screen. Um, if I change the anchor to be stretched like this, it will now keep it locked to the ex extents of the screen. And actually that's what I want in this case. So I'm going to leave that there on stretched. And you can obviously stretch it to different edges or different sides. Um, I also change the order because at the moment it's covering everything up. So I'm going to make it minus one. So it pushes it to the back. And then in the color and opacity, no, where is it? In brush, I can set the image. If I click on this drop down, I'll get all the images that are available to me in this project. And there's quite a lot. It's all the materials, everything. Uh, best thing to do is what we've been doing so far, which is actually to get an image from the, the widgets that have already been created by this company. And we can see what they look like here, right? Now, how they've done it, they've created a background in what looks like another image, yeah. So we are going to select this image here, all right? So we've got it. Well, let's move that out of the way. I'm going to go to my content browser, it's there. Click on this and drag this into the image slot. There we go, it's looking nice already, isn't it? It's got this nice little detail at the bottom here, just finishes it all off nicely. Now, I really do want to move these out of the way. I was trying to do this earlier and it got a bit messy. So what I'm going to do is I am going to create a new canvas panel, but I'm just going to select one of them for now and create a new canvas panel that's going to wrap around it. So wrap with canvas panel. Remember that the canvas panel is what is underneath the whole thing at the moment. Oh, I've selected the button there. Um, so this is a canvas panel right at the bottom on the root. You can see it here, canvas panel. So this is the new Canvas panel. See it's labeled here. I'm actually going to name it Canvas Panel Preset. And this is like a way of grouping all your UI elements together to make it nice. So we're going to make this larger. And now wherever I move this to, it's going to move anything that's inside the Canvas panel as part of it. Now you see it's also messed up my text a little bit because the sizes of it is different. So we'll have to do a little bit of work just rejigging everything. But it's worth it because once we've done this, it will always stay neat and tidy. So I'm going to have my save button there. I'm going to drag this button over to here and hopefully that's dumped it in. No, it hasn't. So I'm just going to click and drag this into the canvas panel so that it's it's part of the, the setup. And you see it's gone. Where's it gone? What it's done is it's put it over here because it's, it's now trying to position itself relative to where it used to be. And it's got a new base position that's moved because we've got a canvas panel. Um, and the canvas panel has its own route, so it's added the two routes together. So we can do that, and now we're going to bring these two spin boxes over. I'm just going to do this all in one go now. Now the other way of doing this is just to click and drag them and put them all inside the canvas panel like this. And they all jump over, and we'll drag them back over here. There we go. And then within this, I'm going to just tidy it all up, and then I'm going to put anchors within the canvas panel. So the canvas panel will have an anchor to the route, and these will have an anchor within the canvas panel. So if, a ca if, if the panel changes, it will update the position of all these buttons as well. Or we or we doesn't because we don't want it to. So I'm going to select on this one and I'm going to I'm going to link this one to the to the bottom right. Make sure I've select spin box anchor bottom right. I'm going to select this one to the top right. This one to the top in the middle. This one to the bottom in the middle. You see this anchor's moving each time. This one to the bottom left, and this one should already be at the top left. There we go. Now, if I move this around, let's just save that. What we should see happen is everything should just keep smudging around because it's, it's locked to the anchor. So that is a bit frustrating if it gets too small, but it does mean that everything's got a kind of a relative place. If everything was locked to the, to the right anchor, when I move that around, everything will be moving out of the screen. So at least this way it will stay on the screen no matter what, it's just it might end up overlapping if the screen size is too small. But as we're designing this for an HD screen, and that's fairly typical, you know, it, it will it will be good for most applications. Um, if you're designing for a mobile screen, obviously put that setting in and see how it looks. So I'm going to put that over here. I'm now going to put the anchor for the whole canvas, which is currently here, over to the right. 
There we go. And now if I make it a bit smaller, because I don't like that, you see how it nice neatly changes everything around. Yeah, it just makes it easier to, to array things. Okay, so that's going to be um, the preset. And I might add a different background to this because I'd quite like to make it look um, like it stands out from the others. So I've got settings title here, which I provide. It's a text, slightly different color. And I've got these sliders and an icon tab. So I am going to click on this. I've got that selected. I'm going to get an image. And I'm going to click and drag that into the preset. I'm going to drag the image out across all of that. I'm going to set the order to minus one. Now the other one's also at minus one, the other border. So at the moment they are kind of in the same place, which is a bit risky. Now ideally what I'd do is I'd I'd be planning this so that I'd have zero is like the, the, the sort of the front, the base, and then go backwards minus one, minus two of all the backgrounds and go forwards plus one, plus two with all of my buttons. Um, but as it works, I'm going to leave it for the moment. But just bearing that in mind that it might need to change later. There we go. So I've now got that nice little preset thing and it's neatly lined my boxes. Um, now I could also label this box, but I think I'll just, I'll just leave it for now. And now I've got some fixture controls. So I'm going to put all of these together in its own canvas panel. So let's uh, Let's get another canvas panel. I'm going to choose, where is it? I'm going to type it in. Canvas panel. I'm going to stick it over here. And put it into the right hand corner. And now I'm going to try to be clever this time and click and drag all of these things in in one go. And we'll see if it keeps it all. I'm leaving the macros where they are. We can do those differently. And click and drag that into. Oh, I didn't label it. So this is why you need to label things. Take a look. It's kept the orientation of them all the same. Oh. It's a little bit too small at the moment, but that's okay. I'll put it like that. And now, if I make the canvas bigger, it's going to move stuff, but that's okay. Just going to make that a bit bigger and now move these back down again. And I'm going to select them here this time. That was a little bit easier than trying to select them all inside the window. There we go. Now all of these I'm going to select on mass and add them to the center. I don't want these to move around at all when we move this window because they will, um, it will change the size of the sliders and they won't work. So I've added that and you see now it, it's they all stay relative to each other. Okay, it does mean that they end up going off the screen potentially if it's too small, but we just have to hope that nobody tries running this on a small screen. There we go, and I'll do the same thing again. I'll add another image in. Common image, add that down there. I'm going to just label this canvas panel because that's annoying me. So this is fixture. Oh, got a capital. Fixture controls. And that image, we can drag it out. Set it to minus one. And change the image to the title one again. There we go. Now it's a little bit small because what it's done is actually cut the top and the bottom off. It's got an alpha texture on it, so it's see it's gone slightly see-through. Um, I actually want the canvas to be a little bit bigger to try and hide that, or the image to be bigger, in fact. So if I just hold and click I'll see if I can make that bigger and what it would do. No, it's not going to change anything. It's it's happy with with the size that it's at. So I'm going to make it larger by making the canvas larger. Or make sorry making the image larger to overlap. There we go. Well that sort of does it, doesn't it? There we go. Compile and save. And we're happy with that. And finally, I've got these two macro buttons. I'm going to create a little macro window down here in the corner. So I'm just going to select both of these. Uh, wrap with canvas panel. It's done that thing again where it makes a really weird looking canvas panel. I'm going to rename this as macros. Drag this out. You see, I've done three different ways of making the same thing here. Um, try and make it easier to demonstrate things. Uh, need to select the Canvas panel, not the button. It's making it very hard for me. There we go. There's the canvas panel. 
Go drag it out. It really doesn't want me to do it. Stick that back in. <laughs> oh, it's been really stubborn. Let's make sure that is in there as well. That's why it doesn't realise that I want both of those buttons in. I thought because I selected them both, it's going to wrap it around both of them, but it hasn't. There you go. Now that is dynamically changing as we go. And I'm just going to place this in the corner down here. I'm not going to anchor these to... Uh, so I'm not, I'm not going to put a base in, a background, but I am going to just anchor them to the... To the to the canvas, so I've anchored the the sub canvas to the to the master, sorry the uh, the parent and the buttons are anchored to the corners. And it's got really small again. I'm gonna try and drag this out, and it's dropped it out of the canvas. Being really fiddly today. I don't know why it's doing that. Probably fell off of hearing me say that now. It was in that canvas and it's dropped out. So let's just go back. Undo, undo, undo. Control Z. It did it when I changed that anchor. So let's have a look at the anchors on the top. Do you know what? I can leave I can leave the anchor there because it's it's doing its job. If I try changing it to the middle, what happens? No, it doesn't like that. Doesn't like any of it. Oh, let's not do the stretch. All right, let's undo a few more times. I know this is cheating, and you see me do it. But I'm just going to leave that there. If I move this canvas around, it's going to follow. So that's fine. So there's the macros. Now the last thing I'm going to do, and then this literally is the end of the tutorial for series, is I'm going to add in a nice title at the top. So they've done this with their settings. I quite like this. They've used these arrows. Um, I'm going to really cheat. I'm just going to literally copy and paste this straight out of this widget. So I'm going to select all of those. Control C, go into my widget. Control V. There we go. That was easy. I'm going to place it sort of central. We've got this nice little margin at the top here. Give us an idea. If it's 1920 by 1080, 1920 means that we're looking at about 950 for the center. So maybe over a little bit. And I'm going to change the name settings to. DMX console. And I just need to move these out a little bit now as well, just to make that fit. Um, I'm going to select more, make sure the anchor is somewhere sensible. I can't even see the anchor at the moment. I'm going to put it in the top middle up there. Compile and save. Right, let's turn this light back on again. Let's go for its startup. We're going to go back to our DMX console, hit play. That looks very smart, doesn't it? Oh, we've got a bit of an overlap there. You know, I can uh, I can change that. We can now just move that widget down. Let's just do that quickly. That's because the screen is a different size than what we designed. Oh, I selected the wrong thing. Let's make sure I selected the preset panel. Oh, it's because it's right at the end now. Yeah, everything's just starting to get a little bit fiddly. <laughs> Oh, okay, I'm going to do it a different way. I'm going to select it and I'm going to move it down in here. So position X is fine. I'll move it down in position Y. So there. Okay, compile, save. Back to here. There we go, that's nice. Not quite central, but you get the idea. It's a nice little bit of shadowing on these uh, elements they created. Makes it look like it's popped out slightly. So we're going to select... Oh, look, see, a couple of little things are to fix still, but, you know, we'll... We'll come back to that and maybe in a, a different lesson. So we're going to select fixture one because that's what that's preset to. And we're going to increase its intensity. Oh dear, what have I done now? Zero. Have I got these labels the wrong way around? Yep, there we go. <laughs> so I need to swap those around. Um, that's the intensity. Set the go back to zero. Got the colour, got the pan and tilt. There we go, and I can 
Global macros. I'm not going to override that with a shutter. So I've got some strobing going on. And I'm going to save that. If I remember to save these in the right names. To fixture 2, which actually means preset 2. There we go. I hope you enjoyed that. I enjoyed making it. That is how you could make a DMX lighting console from a uh, from Unreal Engine Blueprints. As I said right at the beginning, Unreal Engine really isn't the right tool for doing this. But this isn't what you should be building lighting desks in. And even if you wanted to build exactly what I've just shown you, still don't use Unreal Engine. What this is great for is uh, it's accessible uh, because Unreal Engine is free and it's quite easy to learn. Uh, you can learn how to use blueprints and the DMX subsystem, which opens up a whole new range of things for you to do for other projects. And uh, you could, you know, potentially just build your own DMX visualizers in here with your own lighting controllers, build anything you need as part of another project that's using blueprints and Unreal Engine. So I'm sure that if you followed this training tutorial, you've learned a whole load of things from user interfaces to DMX systems to how to send DMX. Uh, as well as the whole blueprint system. I mean, we've only really touched the tip of the iceberg, but it's hopefully just unlock things enough that you can really, really start going forward with it. So I'm going to leave that with you, and please send comments and feedback, likes, share, subscribe, all of that stuff, and um, stay tuned for future training videos that I'll be posting on Unreal, Unity, and a whole suite of other software we use in the theatre industry. Thank you.